Welcome to Olive Branch Church, where our mission is to create a vibrant community that emphasizes enrichment, excellence, and fellowship. We are so excited that you have tuned into The Word Made Plain with Pastor Dr. Vincent L. Windrow Sr. today. We hope that you're impacted, empowered, and enlightened through the Word of God. Let's join Pastor Windrow as he delivers today's message. Hello, howdy, hi, what's happening? Welcome to Wednesday, welcome to Bible study, welcome to the BSC. I'm talking about the Bible study edition of the Word Made Plain. It is not Sunday, it is Wednesday. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining in in this discussion. What are we talking about? We're talking about they wrote them, we sing them. We are talking about hymns. Now, here is the way we've been doing it. We, we've introduced the author. Then the next Wednesday, we've talked about the hymn. Now, Fanny Crosby had three hymns that we talked about, right? But typically, we'll have one author and one hymn. So, y'all good? Had a good day, did you? Good. Happy to know it. Are you progressing well? Right? I know there's a whole bunch of stuff going on around you. I want you to continue to find stability in God. I know there's some gyrations and there's been some gyrations going on, whether it's whether it's the pandemic or the war in the Ukraine. I mean, there is just stuff going on. Right. But but get centered. Remain centered. Right. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus's blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ. The solid rock I stand, all of the ground is seeking sand. Well, one of the opportunities that all of this gyrating stuff presents to us is for, is for us to affirm our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith in God is well-founded, right? It is a great idea. It's not flimsy, right? You, you, you're doing the right thing trusting in your God. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are doing the right thing remaining in him, maintaining, uh, 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 being in his presence, praying the scriptures, right? Praising your God. You are doing the right thing, even as you encourage other people to do the same. Hang in there. Amen. Amen. Good. So what do we have here? Of course, we have some announcements. Well, let me tell you, last Wednesday, I blew the announcements. I'm going to try to get it right this time. Now, the first Sunday in April, I think that's April the 3rd, what we got floating. We have Sunday school. Sunday school kicks off the first Sunday in April, 8.30 in Nashville, 9 o'clock in Murfreesboro. I'll say it again for those in the back, cooking fried chicken and some uh, waffles and some uh, fritz fries and some aroma Brussels sprouts and some aroma uh, fish and spaghetti. For all of y'all doing all that on this Wednesday, Sunday school, 8.30 in Nashville, 9 o'clock in Murfreesboro, starting Sunday, April the 3rd. You already know that the vineyard has reopened to a big splash. Is that a splash? No, that's not a splash. What's a splash? Splash. Yeah, big splash. Good. We're excited about what is taking place back in the vineyard. Please, ma'am, please, sir, please escort your children back to the vineyard. They'll be well taken care of, not just with care, right? Not just with people caring for them, but with the curriculum, with the arts and crafts, all that is taking place back there. Please, ma'am, please, sir, take your children to the vineyard in Murfreesboro and in Nashville. Amen. This year is rolling, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. What, what we have? We have we have one more Wednesday after this, and then it will be April. Wow. We are rolling. We are rolling. Summer's coming up. You know, we stay extra busy in the summertime. We don't slumber in the summer. No, we don't. We gets busy. We gets busy. That's right. Amen. So, so let, let me call your attention to Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. 
my, my, my. You may read that again. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Amen. That's what we'll be talking about today. How great thou art is the hymn, and now here is the prayer. God, when we consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, and everything that you have ordained, everything that you have made happen, we are amazed at the glory of all of those things. It is so awesome that you and you alone, you've created creation. Creation is yours. You didn't inherit it. No one gave it to you. It is yours. And so God, we're ever, ever mindful of the fact that you are mindful of us. Your mind is filled with good things regarding our lives, God. So we thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness, God. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for being you. And God, you've blessed us with this time together to explore the lives of our fellow believers, God, to explore their work, God. All, God, in an attempt, in an effort for us to know more about you and to draw closer to you. God, we thank you for those experiences that those people have had. We thank you, God, for their faithfulness to you. But God, most of all, we thank you for your faithfulness towards them and towards us. Great is thy faithfulness. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this purpose of this time that we have together. Bless it, bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, all right. Well, let's get to it. Come on. Come on, everyone. Now. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, no. Uh -uh. You thought you was going to get away, didn't you? You thought I was going to forget. No, brother, no, sister. I did not forget. You had a homework assignment. What was that assignment? OK, let me let me provide some context. Your boy was Carl Boberg, son of a carpenter, born in Sweden. Spent some time in the Navy, spent some time as a lay minister, spent some time as an editor of a Christian newspaper, spent 20 years in the Swedish parliament. He was a poet, a hymn writer, a gospel song writer. From what I have learned about Carl Boberg, he lived a pretty good life, a long life, 80 years seemed to be filled with achievements and, and accomplishments, goals met, dreams fulfilled. It, it, it doesn't seem like there has been too much, there was too much uh, tragedy or calamity or affliction or sickness in his life, which is uh, different than the lives of the other authors of the other writers that we've looked at. We know that John Newton and William Cooper and Fanny Crosby and Charlotte Elliott all experienced great hardship in their lives. But it seems as though Carl Boberg was unscathed. Now, here's what we know. Nobody gets out of this life really unscathed. But in comparison, in comparison to John Newton, William Cooper, Fanny Crosby, and Charlotte Elliott, it seems and it doth appear that Carl Boberg lived a relatively, you know, cool life, right? Respected, revered, not just for his work in Parliament, but also for his writings. All, you know, for the 60 poems and gospel songs and hymns that he wrote. So, it, 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 and so let me let me read to you again what he what he said about the writing of how great thou art. He says it was in 1885, and in the time of year when everything seemed to be in its richest coloring, the birds were singing in trees and wherever they could find a perch. One particular afternoon, some friends and I had been to another part of Sweden where we had participated in the afternoon service. As we were returning, a thunderstorm began to appear on the horizon. We hurried to a shelter. There were loud 
claps of thunder and the lightning flashed across the sky. Strong winds swept over the meadows and billowing fields of grain. However, the storm was soon over and the clear sky appeared with a beautiful rainbow. After reaching the crib, I'm sorry, he didn't say that. After reaching my home, I opened my window toward the sea. The church bells were playing the tune of a hymn that same evening. I wrote a poem which I titled, Oh, So Good. In English, How Great Thou Art. Now, your assignment, yes, 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 your assignment was for your eyes to come open, for your ears to come open, for your nose to come open, and for you to experience life, to be inspired by what God has created, by what God has been performing all around you. Your, your homework was to name something specific that you experience and that calls you to be in awe of God, right? For you to remember that this is his creation. For you to remember that he is your father. For you to remember that he is God. I think we lose sight of the fact not that God is God. Now, we know that, we remember that, but I, I don't think we're always tender or sensitive to that fact. Why? Because we have a, a degree of control, a degree of authority, a, a, de a degree of leadership over stuff, right? A degree. And so sometimes I think, I don't think we think we are gods, Yet, we do have dominion, right? We, 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 in many cases, run some stuff. And in our running some stuff, we forget, I believe. Or we have become desensitized to the fact that God is so much bigger than our worlds that we occupy that we have this authority or this prominence or, or this respect, that, 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 that God is so much bigger than our worlds. So, so I encouraged you last Wednesday to, to just take a chill pill, to pause, consider, look around, listen for the birds chirping, Listen for the animals doing their thing, right? Look up in the sky at night, whether it's cloudy or not, whether you can see the stars or not, but just be present. Be present. And then give God praise for he is like really good, right? And he has made all of this. What, what did Psalm 19 say? Psalm, Psalm 19, the, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The, the psalmist, David, was sensitive to his place, to his rather small, minuscule place on earth. And he had no idea how large, how expansive the earth was, he is. He had no idea. He had no idea. I'm talking about he had no idea. The, the, the area that David lived his life in was, was super duper small, right? But, but he knew that he was super duper small. And he was inspired. He was all inspired. He was inspired by, by the awesomeness of God. It, 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 it was David who, who said, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? They was like, man, 
God, you are so much the bomb, and yet, I mean, you've done all of this stuff, the moon, the stars, the clouds, the sky, everything, and, and, and yet you, you notice me. Whew, what a mighty God we serve. That was your homework. I know it. I, I know you're trying to slip away. No. Uh-uh. Write in the chat something that you have noticed that in your taking time, not in such a hurry to get to the next thing, but appreciating your journey, right? One of, the, one of the things that I do sometimes when I feel like I'm in a rut, I take another route to the place where I'm going, to the, to the normal places that I go. Instead of going my normal route, I go another route. And on that other route, I see different things, right? Different buildings, different people, cars. It isn't the same thing. And so I get to acknowledge that there is so much more than what I see every day. I encourage you to do the same. It builds up wonder in your life. Like, man, look at God. God has done all of this and more. So in the chat right now, in the chat right now, put something, put something in that chat to acknowledge that you slowed down, that you took time to notice God and his, and his handiwork, God and his creation, God and what God has provided for us. Amen. Go ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Now. Thank you. Good. So, so we know the story behind the writing of Bo Berg's How Great Thou Art. It went from violence, you know, the thunder, the lightning, the wind, you know, it can, that can be violent, right? Nature can be violent. I mean, think about it, right? And then it transitioned into calmness. And Boberg fell at his feet in humble adoration of his mighty God. He thought about his experience that day. He reflected on what he had seen, what he had felt, what he had heard, right? The emotions that he had experienced during that time when he was running to shelter or, or, or when, he had, when he heard the, the thunder clapping, when he saw the lightning streak across the sky or, or, or the wind blowing. All of that is what he reflected on, but not all. The rainbow. The birds chirping. He had heard the church bell ringing. He reflected. We've talked about taking time to reflect, right? Before we dash off to the next thing, take time to reflect. Carl Boberg reflected and wrote nine verses. Now, over the course of time, uh, verses have been added. Verses have been subtracted, right? O over the course of time. But the essence of what Boberg penned way back then still exists. The essence is still there. The awe is still there. The amazing experience and what he thought about it, how he reflected on it, is still there in this hymn. So come on. So, so let, 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 let's, let's look at the first pieces of it. O oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Remember, he saw all of this taking place and again was in awe, not just of the creation, but the creator right? We spend a lot of time sometimes talking about the creation without giving God his due 
in creating it. Oh, the sky is so blue today. Oh, it's, it's so beautiful. Oh, look at the Big Dipper and uh, the Zodiac sign. Is that Taurus the bull? Yeah, but you can't leave the all there. You, you, you can't leave uh, 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 the, the glory there. You can't leave the beauty there. You have, you can't give the sky what God deserves. You, you can't give the, 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 the bird what God deserves. God made the sky. God made the birds, right? And you can't say, oh, that's a beautiful bird. Oh, that chirping sure is beautiful. Look at God. I, that's the next step, and that's the step we leave out sometimes because maybe in our subconscious, we, we, know, we know that God is the one who did it. Well, well, go ahead and say it. I bet you he doesn't mind you saying it. When you say, oh, look at the, oh, it's such a beautiful night. It is a beautiful night. But what about giving God some praise and some glory and some credit for creating night? Oh, look at the sunset. It's a beautiful sunset. Oh, God, thank you for this beautiful sunset. Oh, look at the sun rising. Oh, look at the sun rising over yonder. Yeah, God, thank you for that sunrise. I'm encouraging you to give credit where credit is due. Right? It's nothing wrong with complimenting or saying something nice about something around you. But don't leave out God. Don't leave out God. Come on with this thing again. Oh, Lord, my God. When I, in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. The, the, the sun isn't setting the sun. The sun isn't causing the sun to rise. The, the, the stars have not placed themselves where they are. None of, none of this is doing anything by itself. We did not give ourselves life. So what Boberg is saying is that, ah, oh, He's saying what we say. We could very easily say, we could very easily retitle how great thou art and, 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 and scratch that out and put, look at God. In our common vernacular, look at God as an expression of, 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 of our Christian talk. Look at God. Won't he do it? Right? Because we are in amazement at what God does, what he has done, and what he does. Bo Berg, he got it right. He got it right. Then here's the refrain. He said, this is high pitch. Now, this is a little bit too high. Then sings my soul. That's, that's too high for me. I, I, I wonder if they got something lower. Hey, Bethany! It's, 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 that note is too high for me, ain't it? What do I supposed to do if, when it's too high for me? Try a lower note, but singing the same words? Does that make sense? And then sings like that. Then sings my soul, my say. But what about that high pitch? Then sings my soul. Do you like that? Is that good? Then sings my soul. Do I sound like I'm classically trained? <laughs> let's, let's look at this refrain then sings my soul my savior God to thee how great thou art 
how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Boberg has provided us a wonderful approach to giving God praise. What? He has taught us, inspired us to observe, to notice, to take note of what's happening around us and then give God the glory for it. Give God the credit for it. After viewing what he has seen, after experiencing this encounter, Boberg says, then, after that, I don't walk away. After that, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. I think that's a fitting end. It's a wonderful conclusion to an experience such as Boberg had, but not just Boberg. We have the same kinds of of experiences. God's power is on display in our lives. Boberg simply took the time to notice and to note God's influence in all of that happening. Give God praise, won't you? Give God praise. And after you notice something, then your, your soul should sing. How great thou art. How great thou art. I think there is a reason, a legitimate reason, as to why that periodical Christianity today said that how great thou art is the number two hymn of all times, only coming in second place to amazing grace. This is a beautiful hymn. And it helps us to acknowledge God's presence, God's power, God on full display in our lives. It challenges us to take the next step. Not just say, well, you, you know God knows my heart. You know God knows my heart. You know God knows my heart. Yeah, 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 he does. Yeah, he does. He knew Boberg's heart. Boberg expressed his amazement, Right? Boberg expressed the fact that he was in awe of God's handiwork, right? Just like the psalmist. And so should we express, not just that it's beautiful. Oh, look at the beautiful lilies. Oh, the petunias. They're gorgeous. Yeah. Nothing wrong with saying that. Take the next step and say, wow, God is so creative, right? For him to make all of this stuff and for this stuff to evolve into what it is today. Man, there's a, there's a place in, in, in uh, Genesis where, where it talks about God called the grass out of the ground. Whoa. He, he called, he summoned the grass out of the ground. Man, ain't that something? Hadn't been no grass. But God told the grass to come out of the ground. Now, that's amazing. Think about all the amazing things that God has done for you. Here's your assignment for tonight. 
in your prayer, before you retire tonight, before you go to bed, include in your prayer, if you would, a thank you note to God for what he has done in your life. Include in your prayer a love note to God to express how amazing he is to you. Right? How precious he is to you and how much you appreciate nature, creation, and everything that God has done, all his power on full display in your life. People of God, God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. God bless you so very much. I've enjoyed this. I'll see you Sunday, and then I'll see you Right back here next Wednesday, God be with you until we meet again. You've been listening to The Word Made Plain with Pastor Dr. Vincent L. Windrow Sr. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you right here next week. For questions about this broadcast or general questions about our church, call us at 615-941-1268 or email us at churchadmin at olivebranchchurch.org.